Professor Dave and Chegg here. We know that alkanes are fully saturated hydrocarbons, meaning they possess the maximum hydrogen content possible, so every carbon has as many bonds to hydrogen as possible. But some hydrocarbons are unsaturated, so let's learn about the various degrees of unsaturation that are possible. If saturation means maximum possible hydrogen content, then unsaturation means less than the maximum possible hydrogen content. In other words, carbon atoms are participating in additional carbon-carbon bonds, or bonds to other elements, instead of bonding to hydrogen. So ethane, C2H6, is fully saturated because the two carbon atoms can't have any more bonds to hydrogen atoms. Ethene, or ethylene, C2H4, has one degree of unsaturation due to the carbon-carbon pi bond. This pi bond is preventing two additional hydrogen atoms from coordinating. We can say the same thing about straight-chain butane, or C4H10, versus cyclobutane, or C4H8. Because the molecule closes in on itself to form a ring, the two end carbons must have a bond between them, and this additional bond results in a degree of unsaturation. In general, every pi bond and ring in a molecule adds another degree of unsaturation, which will result in two hydrogens lost from the maximum possible, given by CnH2n plus 2, which describes alkenes. Knowing the degree of unsaturation can help us predict molecular structure. Let's say that we know the molecular mass of a hydrocarbon as being 82 atomic mass units, which corresponds with a formula of C6H10. If a 6-carbon molecule were fully saturated, it would have the formula C6H14. Since there are only 10 hydrogens, this molecule must have 2 degrees of unsaturation. This does not tell us precisely what the molecule is, but we know that the molecule must either have two pi bonds, two rings, or one pi bond and one ring. So it could be cyclohexene, it could be hexine, or many other possibilities. Degrees of unsaturation can extend to compounds with heteroatoms as well. For more involved examples, we will use this equation instead, where the number of degrees of unsaturation will be equal to twice the number of carbon atoms in the molecule, plus 2, plus the number of nitrogen atoms, minus the number of halogens, minus the number of hydrogens, all over 2. So, for example, take the formula C6H10NCl. How many degrees of unsaturation must this molecule have? Well, twice the number of carbons is 12, plus 2, plus the 1 nitrogen, minus the 1 halogen, minus 10 hydrogens, all over 2. So that's 4 over 2, which is equal to 2. And in fact, this could be a molecule like this. And with the 1 ring and the 1 pi bond, we do indeed see that there are 2 degrees of unsaturation. This concept of degrees of unsaturation will be useful for certain applications, especially spectroscopy, which we will examine later. For now, we must simply know what this term means and be able to determine molecules which exhibit a specific number of degrees of unsaturation. Professor Dave for Check. See you next time.